Hey, welcome to Confident Communication for Entrepreneurs. In today's episode, what we'll be talking about is five top public speaking fears and anxieties that hold people back from becoming your most confident version of yourself. So stay tuned because it's a very powerful episode. A lot of times the anxieties just hold us back and I'll, I'll get right into it because as soon as we can identify these, then we can move forward, okay? So first anxiety that comes up is speaking to large audiences. Perhaps you're there and, and one-on-one or in a small group, you're very comfortable, you're very confident, you feel good about yourself, but then if it gets to 15, 20, 35 people, you start getting really nervous. You start getting really anxious. There's all these eyes on you. You start feeling uh, all the spotlight. You're the center of attention and it just starts to freak you out. You feel your heart racing, you get overwhelmed with all these eyes, and it just makes you very afraid. Well, if that's you, uh, this is a very common fear. I have clients that come up with this all the time. This is one of the top fears, that's why it's on this list. And the thing is, you know, I had a client recently that uh, she came in, uh, she works for a, a telecommunications company, and the thing is, she had great ideas in her small group meetings, but as soon as in front of a larger board, she started to get kind of quiet, she would hold back her ideas, and then her boss would say, hey, why don't you share? You have so much amazing information and ideas. Why do you never share in front of the larger setting? And that was the fear that came up. And she goes, look, in front of this big audience, I just, I get really uncomfortable and I, and I kind of climb up. And that's why she came to work with me, to break her from that. So that, that was the, the first thing is, if it's about the number of people in the audience, all these eyes on you, and being uncomfortable, being the center of attention, then that's the first real public speaking fear and anxiety that comes up. Number two is blanking out. So perhaps you go there and you've been in the situation, you've said yes to the opportunity, you're in front of an audience, and now it's what happens if I blank out? What happens if I get up there and I just go, I start to stutter, or I blank out, or my mind just shuts down, and then I'm just humiliated. That is such a very common fear for people that they get up there and what happens is, this is typically before you even hit the stage, you're freaking out about blanking out. And what happens with that is then you show up to your presentation and you're already defeated because you're, you've built up so much fear before you hit the stage that when you get up there, you're gonna be depleted energetically and you're gonna be very concerned about blanking out, which is going to take away from your presentation. So again, this is it. I'm sharing these tips with you to normalize it. If, if you think, uh, because the one of the biggest obstacles for people is they think that they're alone, that they're messed up, that there's something wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with you, okay? The, the fear of public speaking is the number one most common fear there is. So there's nothing wrong with you. It's actually a very common scenario. And the choice is, can we move you forward to become more confident? Yes. Step one is identifying what are the fears and anxieties, and then we can move forward. So that's why I'm sharing these, these tips with you. Fear number three. It's not being liked by an audience. This comes up so often. What happens is you get up there, you're looking at this audience, 20, 30, 50 people in, and what's happening is you're thinking, oh my God, I, I wanna be liked by everyone. And you're going up there. What happens is there's always that one person who's on their phone or somebody that's writing down and looking distracted, and it gets hit up in your mind that you're thinking, why, why don't they like me? The reason this comes up, it, it comes back from the source is you've given up your power in this scenario because it's coming from a place of wanting to be a people pleaser. Now maybe it's like, well, I'm a, I'm a good person, you know, I'm, I'm nice, I, want, I care about other people. Yes, but are there some people pleasing aspects to it that might be stealing your power and your confidence and holding you back? This could be a big one because what happens is people enter into the speaking situation and they walk in with the mindset that I wanna be liked by everyone, I wanna win everybody over, and that is impossible. So the quicker that you just drop it and know that I can't win over the entire audience, and I don't want to, that's when you start taking your power back. So that's the third very common one, is about not being liked by the audience, that fear and wanting to people please. Let's drop that, we can move forward. Number four is embarrassing yourself. So maybe you've been in this situation before where you get up there and you think, I, I'm just afraid to embarrass myself. Like what if I get up there and I, I get, you know, I blank out or I miss a couple lines or I forget what I was gonna say or it doesn't go perfect, right? It's not as perfect as I, I thought. Well, then that is a big fear that comes up. Is like if I embarrass myself that I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss opportunity and I should have maximized and all these fears that go on. Look, I had a client recently who was going through a very similar situation where they, they were thinking, 
you know, all these opportunities come up, but the fear was, uh, they were saying, I, you know, I have a good reputation. I've built, I've spent years building up this reputation and what happens if I get up there in front of an audience and I give a talk that doesn't go well? That's gonna ruin my reputation. I'm gonna embarrass myself. And it, it, this was the fear that was preventing them from taking that step. And what happened is we have to look at the situation and go, no, like we built up uh, his confidence, but also it's that you can't embarrass yourself because you're getting up there, you're building that skill set. So is there talks that maybe don't go as planned? Yes. Also in our training, it's in a safe environment, small group scenario. So we get these, these embarrassing mistakes out of the way in this training zone so that you're able to step up and be polished and be professional when you are in front of a live audience and when it matters. But the other thing too is the audience, they don't remember you. Literally, we are so overwhelmed with technology that the moment you, your talk is over, they're gonna walk out, they're gonna grab their phone, they got a ton of emails, a ton of text messages, missed calls, and that's where their attention goes. A lot of times people overestimate the amount of, of focus and attention that your audience has on you after your talk. Really, it's talk's done, they're on. So again, embarrassing yourself, that's a top fear of people making that happen or missing the opportunity, you're not maximizing it. Let's drop that because you have so many opportunities to seize once you become confident that this is not gonna be a fear. And the fifth and last fear that comes up, it's this fear that you might have experienced this if you get in front of an audience, maybe you're just not good enough. It's this deep fear that you're not good enough, you're not credible enough, you're not experienced enough, and it holds people back because they're constantly questioning it. It's like, well, if I go in front and I talk in front of this audience, one, maybe other people have built me up to be a bigger expert than I really feel that I am, or what if I go up and I just can't deliver, or I get exposed, or somebody in the audience questions my thoughts, and I, 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 have, I don't know how to answer their question. What happens then? They, so much fear and, and anxiety that builds up from this that it's either you miss opportunities or it's just so much nerves and sleepless nights and stress levels that it takes away your energy when you do get up there. And recently I had a client that she was very accomplished, okay? And, and when we came down to the fears, we, I worked with her and I said, look, what is the big fear? What's the big fear? And she's like, look, I just don't think I'm credible enough. This lady has a PhD and two master's degrees, okay? A PhD and two master's degrees. I go, what else do you need? What other qualifications could you possibly get? She's like, well, you know, I'd like to have a bit more under my belt. No, because what's happening is it's a fear that we're not good enough and that's what's holding her back. No training, no certification is going to change that until they go inside. So these are, this is another common fear that you're not good enough and we can build that. That's what we have to do is go through it. And again, the reason that I'm doing this is I'm sharing the top top five fears. And these are very common ones. There's gonna be other ones that come up. But I mean, the first, it's larger groups being the center of attention. That's a big fear. Uh, blanking out, the fear of blanking out is another big fear. The third one is not being liked by the entire audience. What if somebody doesn't like me? They don't like what I say. I offend somebody. Huge fear that comes up. Fourth is embarrassing yourself. So you see the opportunity. What if you embarrass yourself? Very common fear that comes up. And the last one is that you're not good enough. You have questions about your own worth and that your credibility. These are five common fears. Now, fortunately, in the next video, I'm gonna share tips and techniques that you could overcome each one of these fears to start building you up. So if that's of interest, stay tuned for a new video coming up soon and like, comment, subscribe to this channel to get the new ones.